Hello, everyone that's coming in. We're going to go ahead and get started in just a minute or so here. We've got a full agenda. Just want to make sure we have a chance to hear from everyone today. Um, go ahead. If you are there and um, right, go ahead and join the chat and uh, let us know where you're coming from um, and your name, we'll see that. And if you're going to COP or if you've been to a COP, um, we'd love to hear who's joining us today and um, why you're excited to be here. All right, well, I'm gonna get started in about one more minute. We've got a couple more people coming in. And if you are just joining us, um, go ahead and let us know where you're coming from, um, why you're here. If you're going to if you're going to the cop or if you've been to the cop, let us know. Um, and I am going to go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone to our cop preview webinar, as we're sort of colloquially calling it today. Um, we are coming to you today um, with a bunch of awesome uh, participants who are going to be sharing a little bit about what they're excited about um, with COP as well as a little bit of context as it relates to this mystery thing called ACE, maybe you saw in the descriptor. Um, if you are with us um, and can go ahead and rename yourself and include your pronouns. Um, this webinar does have closed captioning options. Uh, if you are interested in having them on, you can go down to that more and choose closed caption. If it is closed captioning right now, please go ahead and you don't wanna have that happening, uh, please go ahead and uh, go ahead and turn it off. Uh, we ask that everyone stays muted, but you know, please keep your camera on if you want. Um, we like to see your faces. There will be some time for questions at the end. Um, I'll begin today just by um, acknowledging where we're all coming from, and especially in the context of uh, the Conference of the Parties um, through the UN, we, we'd like to start at the level of the United Nations. Um, the, in a UN declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples was adopted by the UN General Assembly and in solidarity with indigenous nations and communities of these lands. And so we really wanna ground today and our work in the articles of this declaration, which acknowledges that indigenous peoples have the right to free, prior and informed consent and all aspects of human activity within their ancestral territories. Uh, if you'd like to read more about the, that document, we'll throw it into the, the, into the chat, um, but we'd like you all to really think about how your work um, connects with this and familiarize yourself with the with the pieces of the document. Um, Climate Generation, the organization that's hosting today, we are based within Minnesota Makoche, which is the traditional homeland of the Dakota people. The Dakota people still do call this home, but due to continued legacies of colonization, genocide, and forced removal, Generations of Dakota people remain disenfranchised from their traditional homeland. Uh, we encourage all of you to reflect on the historical legacies that are held in the lands that you occupy. I'm Kristen Poppleton. I'm the Senior Director of Programs of Climate Generation. And um, I am coming to you as a, um, a COP delegate to um, the UN Climate Conference of the Parties this year with Climate Generation. I'm also a member of the US ACE Coalition's delegation, which you'll hear more about. And uh, throughout this uh, webinar, you'll get to hear from other folks and see ways that you'll be able to engage with them at the COP if you're attending, um, and also in many cases virtually, because they are doing a good job of um, broadcasting a lot of those things this year. Um, we, will be, we are recording this webinar, so if you are um, interested in sharing or um, 
it with others or um, referencing some of the information, uh, you'll be able to do that. And we all will be providing links that we share throughout today as well. Um, this event is also streaming on Facebook Live. If you do encounter any tech issues, um, you can pivot to the Facebook Live page. And if you are on Facebook Live right now, welcome. And please feel free to put questions in the chat there. We do have someone monitoring that. Climate generation, just so you have a sense, um, our mission is to um, empower individuals and their communities to engage in solutions to climate change. Um, and we really build our work around these three pillars of overcoming disinformation, centering anti-racism and systemic equity, and personalizing and localizing climate change action. Uh, our work bringing delegations to the COP since 2009 really is grounded in those three principles. Um, while the COP is obviously an international level phenomena, um, the local level solutions that you learn about and the opportunity to highlight the work that folks are doing at a local level is a really key part of that. Um, overcoming systemic equity is literally at the heart of the COP and the heart of what we, what, what we need to do. Um, and, and so that comes out as well. As I mentioned, we have been bringing delegations since 2009. And um, the upper left-hand corner is, is in Copenhagen and in, in, in 2009 when we brought a delegation of youth. Each year we bring a delegation that has a particular theme to highlight the different kinds of work that goes into preparing for a COP, um, the different kinds of voices that are important to be heard we brought 12 educators to Paris in the upper bottom left-hand corner. We brought a de business delegation to highlight the private sector one year. Um, and we were able to bring a multi-sector delegation um, um, into 2017. So many of you probably are here today just to learn a little bit more about what the heck COP is, what is ACE, if you saw that that was part of it. Um, and if you're here for a deep policy um, uh, lesson, uh, this is not unfortunately your place right now. We will be sharing um, some ex articles and readings to that. There's also some great organizations that are actually doing that kind of work right now. Um, and we can direct you to some webinars that are getting deeper into the policy. Um, I have always thought that haiku and short, um, Descriptions can be very helpful when thinking about things. Um, and I have been inspired by the work that was done by Gregory Johnson in 2013, where he took the actual Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report and turned it into a haiku with watercolors. And so bear with me, I am not a talented writer. I wrote COP a haiku. Um, and uh, to give you a sense of what that what it is. So nations of the world climate change front and center must work together. Heads negotiate, the people use their voices, the world and earth watch. Uh, give you a little bit more context, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change is the decision-making body of um, the convention. At the Conference of Parties is the decision-making party of the United Nations Framework Convention. And for more than two decades, the convention's been having annual meetings, the COPs, um, to assess progress and make decisions. There's a multitude of other meetings that prepare for the COP, um, but this is where the nations of the world come together to talk about and ideally make commitments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The uh, goals this year and in years past too um, can be boiled down from my perspective to two high level pieces. One, 1 1.5 degrees. We, COP26 this year is seen by many as the last credible opportunity to limit planetary warming to 1.5 degrees. No big deal, right? Um, and so uh, the countries are coming together to figure out a rule book of how you do this and um, make more ambitious commitments to reducing their greenhouse gas emissions. Once again, very simplified. If you want the deep policy, you can go further, 
But that is like, if you want to boil it down, this is what we need to do. How do we need to do it? Well, we need to be centering climate justice. This is the other piece of this. We need to be centering people in our decision making. We need to be centering people when we're thinking about money. So when we're thinking about how we're financing countries that don't have as much to help them adapt and develop technologies that can help make them more green. We also need to be assessing how we're helping countries with loss and damage. There are countries that are literally going underwater and um, they do not have the resources to deal with that. And so centering people in these decisions. And finally, we need to be, from our perspective as an organization that focuses specifically on education and engagement, we need to be thinking about the elements of ACE. ACE, Action for Climate Empowerment, is something that was adopted by the UN under Article 6 of the Convention and under Article 12 of the Paris Agreement with the overarching goal to empower all members of society to engage in climate action through education, training, public awareness, public participation, public access to information, and international cooperation and or ne networking. Essentially, education and engagement are critical to accelerate action on climate change. We cannot do this whole of society approach, which is what we need without these elements. And today we're highlighting people, which is what this work is about, people, people-centered work who are going to COP, who can tell you a little bit about why they think this is important and what they hope to get out of COP. Um, before we do that though, we are honored today to have with us the US um, ACE focal point, uh, Frank Neopold, who is a longtime partner of ours and supporter in climate change education and recently appointed as the action, the first, the country's first action for climate empowerment national focal point for the US. So Frank, I can forward your slides for you if you'd like, take it away. Fantastic. Um, so it's so uh, it's a great honor to be here with uh, so many good partners, collaborators, future collaborators. Uh, and I, I think the, you know, uh, Kristen, the way you set it up, I really appreciate it. We must work together um, out of your haiku because that's ultimately where we're going. So hit, hit the next slide. Um, so I, I had the distinct honor to represent the US uh, at COP21. Um, and these photographs are from uh, the opening event at COP21 with, uh, with Gina, who's also gonna be going to COP26. Um, but also Kristen, that's from us in the walkway in the green zone. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the blue zone. Uh, you know, so uh, it's, it was a great honor to be there. But the, the most important thing when 45,000 people came together to finally figure out how humanity could address the, the crisis of climate change um, in Paris in, in 2015. But the, the key article, which was the first one passed, which was the one relates to this work. Um, but I think the key part that, that is gets back to your haiku, Kristen, is parties. And I don't think it's just in those, and in, in for COP language, that's nations, but it's not just nations. Um, turns out most of the heavy lifting is done by other entities that are subnational organizations and, and sectors to cooperate. And that's really the spirit by which we come into the COP process and go back from the COP pro process when we're going to continue to do the work after COP26, but that cooperate. So let's go to the next slide, Kristen. Um, and why that's so important is because, you know, this is, this is a little bit of a dated slide, but I find it incredibly useful because after COP21, uh, a ton of different entities started revving up their climate actions, whether it's towns, cities, uh, universities, businesses, faith communities, healthcare sectors. And this is just a subset of that group. And this is from 2019, done under something called the America's Pledge Report. And it clearly shows that it's uneven. It clearly shows that it's significant where 65% of the nation's uh, community members live in a community where there's climate action being committed. But that's really where the work is, is at that below the party or the national level. And I think that that's a crucial, but that's not just unique to the United States, that's worldwide. So 
building the partnerships and collaborations for those who are going with those who are not going is I think a key piece of, of how we do ACE. So let's go to the next one. <clears throat> so why is this so important? Go back to that, that diagram that Kristen ended her remarks with those, those circles. And in order for this to really work, in order for a nation, a community, international to really do the work of addressing climate change, we need public support to advance climate action at all levels. We need it. We are not there yet. Um, we need a workforce that's going to be able to do the work of, of transforming all social society sectors in order to address this work. And that is, relates to our work in so many ways. Um, and we also need to participate in the process of where this happens to ensure that it, it is an equitable, just transition to a new economy. To, and that is, that is only going to happen if people are participating in the process. This is all part of ACE. Um, and also we need our education systems and our learning and our engagement at all levels of society to be transformational. What we have now and what we need it to be as quickly as possible to really do this work is, is very different. Um, that again, that is only going to be done if we work together. Um, and then this, this last piece is like, we got to build the social capacity and momentum to actually accelerate our climate action. Clearly, we're not, all the reports show that, that the commitments by countries and businesses is not adding up to where, how we're going to get to 1.5 degrees warming. Um, so that means we have to uh, speed up that effort. Um, the work we're talking about here of connecting education and training and public awareness, public participation, public access to climate information and collaborating in the doing of it is how we're going to get there. Um, it's a crucial piece. So one more slide, please. So um, I'm going to leave you with this and the, the, all these I'm going to put I'll put the, the, these entities because it's a little hard to find them inside the chat. But these are just some of the networks that have emerged that are how we work together. Um, and now some of these are international, but most of these are domestic in the United States. Um, but they're, all of them have their own individual aspects that are incre increasingly becoming more connected, more networked, more collaborative, no more not working, more sharing, more contributing. Um, and that's actually how, as you said, we must work together. But that only works if we know about each other. So today is a perfect way to begin that process anew. Um, and so I look forward to getting to know more of you and learning how we can work together um, as your focal point. I will not be in COP. The delegation got shrunk uh, because of so many high level um, members of the federal government are going, uh, secretary this, administrator that, and their entourages. So uh, I won't be there in person, but I will be there in spirit and look forward to collaborating when you're back. Thanks, Frank. That was uh, great. I uh, unfortunately working from home issue right now am uh, have people scraping on my windows. So I hope you don't hear that in the background. Luckily, we get to hear from other folks very shortly. Um, and I'm going to introduce them. So featured with us today to speak about ACE, to speak about what they're going to do at COP are a few members of Climate Generations Window into COP26 delegation. Um, a member of the Wild Center's uh, youth delegation, um, as well as other members of the ACE coalition delegation, um, which uh, you can follow and uh, we can, we'll provide more information on that as well. Um, we will begin by hearing from Julieta Rodrigo, one of Climate Generation's uh, delegates and um, an awesome member of the Clio Institute, one of our great partners. Take it away, Julieta. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Great. Uh, I'm so glad to be here. It's really a, a tremendous honor for me to be a part of this delegation. My name is Julieta. Uh, I'm 27 years old and I'm based in Miami, Florida, and I work in an organization called the Clio Institute. It's a nonprofit based in Florida and our headquarters are in Miami, but we have offices throughout the state. And our main work is to do climate education and advocacy, particularly through community uh, level outreach. 
my job in particular is to work with students. Uh, and that's really the main component um, that, that I can contribute to the ACE framework. So a little bit about me before I tell you uh, more about my work. I was born in Argentina in uh, a small, um, and I grew up in a small coastal town called Mar del Plata, and I was surrounded by biodiversity. And when I grew up, particularly, I was interested in the sea lions, and it fostered uh, a love for the ocean and the natural world. When my family emigrated from Argentina to Miami, I was again surrounded by the ocean, and that really drove so much of my climate advocacy. I grew up with sustainability as a core component of my life. And when I went to university and I studied political science, I saw the, the tremendous um, need for more diversity within the political realm, because it's so often the same voices that are being highlighted, and that leads to many of the same policies along the way. When I do my work with youth, we really put climate justice at the center. We, we educate on the connections between climate justice um, and climate education, as well as the, the realities that they're seeing every day, how air pollution is different in different communities, how access to resources is different in different communities. And we try to elevate that conversation to a policy level. So we definitely work with students as well as local government to increase that conversation so that they are listening to the youth and actually implementing what um, youth ideas are being contributed. So it's really been an honor to be a generation team. What I'm most excited for is to see the delegations. I. Um, have never been to COP. This is going to be my first time to COP. It's going to be my first time in Europe as a whole. So my first um, uh, trip there. So I'm really excited to see international negotiations uh, live. I've gotten uh, a little bit of a briefing as to how many conversations happen in the hallways or in random places. And they're not these formal um, negotiations always. And it's really great that uh, I can represent so many groups, you know, I, I count myself among youth. I count myself among frontline communities. You know, I am Latina and I am a minority working in STEM. And I think um, these stories definitely need to be elevated. And I'm excited to meet so many people from around the world with the same goals of increasing civic engagement. Back to you, Kristen, thank you. Thank you, that was lovely. So excited to hang out in Glasgow. Um, next up, we have Betsy Wilkening. Betsy, please join us. Hello there. Um, unlike to Julieta, I'm not going to tell you my age, but <laughs> I will uh, go ahead and tell you that I am in the process of retiring from one position and then working to save the world in my spare time. <laughs> But uh, professionally, a lot of the work I've been doing in outreach education to build community resilience falls within the education framework of ACE and um, building data and climate literacy across the curriculum, connecting students and community members to local threats and enabling and supporting actions to mitigate the effects of climate change are all part of my work at Arizona Project WET. I'm also um, been involved with Polar Educators International um, network of global educators and researchers um, focused on polar science and the polar regions um, since um, the International Polar Year that I was able to participate in in 2009. And um, I hope to really be able to bring those voices along with the voices from my community in Tucson, Arizona to COP. And then from there, I'm gonna see where the journey is going to lead me. I can't really say for sure what I'm going to be doing with all of this um, after COP, but I know that it's gonna give me a lot of opportunities to work with my community at home and, and work with this global network that I'm in. The other thing I want to see coming out of COP is I really do want to see the U.S. become a leader in, in combating climate change at the government level with justice at the forefront. As we all know, just the whole COVID pandemic pandemic has brought forth all the inequity that exists right now. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of anger, a lot of ignorance that surfaced, you know, within the U.S. and abroad. 
And it's the same parallels that we've had all along with climate change too, and understanding climate change and where we can go. So what I wanna see is um, COP become this opportunity where people can see this opportunity. And I think the ACE framework is a really good roadmap to do that um, with growing our economies and having a more equitable future for everyone. And you know, going away, I want COP to be able to actually have some producible action with the with the money backing it, with the finance where it needs to be, so that we can see action moving forward. And I want the world to be able to see hope in the future and not despair, which so many of our our younger um, community members are seeing right now. Thanks. Thanks, Betsy, for. Also excited to hang out with you in Glasgow. Um, Kyle is another member of our delegation who um, was unable to join us today, but hopefully um, you will have a chance to follow him through our digest and some other folks as well. And our next uh, delegate up is Emma. Emma, please take it away. Thank you so much, Kristen. So hi, I'm Emma. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm 19 years old. Um, I am going to be part of the Wild Center's delegation to um, COP26. And I engage with ACE in a kind of twofold way. One is through the Wild Center's incredible youth climate program, which I'll talk about a little bit. But also, I am a youth currently getting my climate education. I'm in school learning about environmental science with a focus on the environment and inequality right now. And really learning how much I, I didn't know when I started getting involved in climate education in high school. But yes, the um, Wild Center's youth climate program is really, really Really incredible because they focus on um, the empowerment part of action for climate empowerment. So the Wild Center is a natural history museum in upstate New York and their youth climate program is essentially a broad network of youth climate summits across the world um, that are often led by young people and with created with the purpose to um, educate those around them about climate change but also to encourage the creation of climate action plans. So I got involved by attending um, a youth climate summit. Yes, Jen just posted in the chat about um, our COP26 journey, but attending a youth climate summit in my hometown, New York City, um, created by Silas, who will also be attending um, COP this fall. And that really inspired me to connect with other people my age engaging in this work. Before then, I really felt like this crisis was on my I had to do something by myself about this crisis. It was so big and scary, and I didn't know kind of how to work with other people to, to address it. But the Youth Climate Program really showed me that there are lots of other people um, in multiple generations doing this work, not only to combat climate change, but also to um, educate others and show others what they can do. So um, that led me to creating the Bronx Youth Climate Summit with a whole lot of other people. Um, and that ended up being the first virtual Youth Climate Summit, which was wacky and terrifying and then really exciting because we were able to connect to an even broader um, group of youth, not just people in our immediate community. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to attend COP26. We were asked to say kind of what, we're, what we want to see come out of COP26. And for me, that's, there's kind of different scales of that. I really, really think that this COP is a moment to make Paris truly mean something. And so that is really sticking to the 1.5 degrees Celsius, but also, as others have said, centering climate justice and how we make this transition, not just the final goal of um, decreasing warming. But I'm also specifically excited about um, ACE and incorporating um, climate empowerment and education into NDCs and all the different forms of climate empowerment and education, talking about the work that museums do and the work that youth can do in their own communities in addition to um, education in school curricula. So that's really exciting to me um, and in line with what the Wild Center does. But I'm personally most excited to connect with other youth and learn about what they're doing and get inspired by them at COP. Already speaking with other people on 
this panel, I've gotten so excited about the work that they're doing. So that's what I'm personally most excited for. Thank you so much. Thanks, Emma. Excited to meet you. Um, moving on to our next person, um, we have Cecilia with us. And Cecilia is actually coming to us on her way to Glasgow to attend the Conference of Youth, which happens right before COP. Um, and she's been having some connection issues. She's actually in a vehicle. So thank you so much for making time to join us. Thank you for having me. Super happy to be here. And yes, I am on my way to Glasgow right now. And um, I'm super excited about it. I am actually from Argentina. So like Julia told everyone, um, we are Latinas and we are bringing our voices to this conference. Um, I am the climate, uh, I am a climate activist since 2017. Um, I have also uh, had, I have the studies in environmental engineering. And this year I will be representing the youth voices in the conference of youth, the COI 16. Uh, we have been working really hard um, building our youth statement from Argentina. Uh, we did, we did, it includes uh, many of the points that you have mentioned before, like education, like justice, uh, the energy transition. Um, I think young people are raising their voices and are, are trying to transform a reality. So it is a big honor for me and a big responsibility uh, to be there in, in COI 16, both in COI 16 and COP 26, where I will make part of the Youth Development Youth Institute delegation. Uh, and I, I, my role will be as an observer. So um, I am super excited about the the things that we got, we could lead together, working together with all uh, people in there and, and, and people center, especially for, for what you have been mentioned. Um, and in that case, I would like to add uh, my vision and adaptation because coming from the global south, and especially in Latin America, we know uh, that not everyone has the opportunities and the resources to tackle uh, all the, the risks that this climate crisis is going to, to bring or is already bringing. So in that sense, we also celebrate that the last year we had uh, successfully uh, agree with the, or, or advance with the Escasio Agreement, uh, which is, um, which is unique in the world. And it's an agreement that uh, focus on people and the, the, to defend the real defenders uh, of the, the, the lands, the earth and, and the, the water. So I am super happy that we have so many voices uh, getting there in Glasgow and looking forward uh, meeting you uh, both in person and virtually. Thank you. Which is gracias, Cecilia. Good luck in your travels. Thank you for joining us and thank you for bringing your voice today. Um, we're going to close out our panel with Isatis, uh, who has been a great partner with us as well in the US ACE work and another person I'm super excited to meet for real, even though I feel like we already know each other. And no. Glasgow. <laughs> yeah. Take it well, away. First, Stop, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. I am from Puerto Rico. And even though we're technically considered by the UN to be part of the United States, we do not share the preparation and resources as the US for climate change. So I come from a Latin American perspective. Um, I'm super happy to be in this panel joined by so great um, leaders here. Uh, I come to you today as a Puerto Rican climate scientist, a climate activist, and also um, a, 
um, an independent consultant. So in my work, I am the regional coordinator for Latin America for an organization called Citizens Climate International. And I am, I'm also part of the coordinating team of the UN community uh, on education, community outreach stakeholders and the USAID coalition. And this is an amazing group of organizations that work together to push forward the people-centered climate action. As part of my work, I focus on empowering and facilitating channels for individuals to influence and shape climate change policy. Um, we make individual people lobbyists. And as part of this work, I bridge um, communities, um, policymakers, and private sectors to you know, come up with like great uh, resources and solutions. Um, additionally, I train and develop participatory processes, which was um, what led us to have an US um, framework for the US ACE framework for the United States and United States. Um, in terms of um, what I'm excited and what I want to see um, from COP, I think that there's something important here in question and is that we often talk about climate crisis and climate emergency, but this emergency is for whom? And who does need to be affected for us to be acting like the crisis that we say it is? Um, as a scientist, I know that the 1.5 is slipping away. And as an Islander, I've seen um, how our communities have been swept away and swung by um, and slammed by um, hurricanes while the world watched and did nothing. So um, we survived, some of us, because we lost 4,645 lives to climate inaction. Um, but we survived because we had each other. And because as communities that are um, vulnerable, we have not been given any other um, choice than to survive. So in that we have developed um, strategies to um, survive toxic care, decaying infrastructure, flooding and all that. So I think about ACE, I, was, I have been thinking a lot about ACE since the past, it seems like I live and breathe ACE. I have been thinking about that for a long time and it kind of reminds me um, this, um movie that like the Av the avengers movie where dr strange says like there's four million and six hundred five um outcomes and there's only one where we win and that is if we lead with communities you know we let them lead the way and show us you know how can we achieve like real solutions because we are in a you know, like the clock is ticking and we need to make sure that those um, solutions that we're bringing are the best. So in terms of COP, I, I have a lot of ambition for, <laughs> for what it should come. So I'm hoping that we laid out clear plans on how to stick to the 1.5, but also I hope that those um, 100 billion a year that was promised over a decade ago really comes to life, you know, and that developed countries really put their money where their mouth is. And um, I also hope that we can deliver on something that's called loss and damage. In, and that is something that it's a mechanism to work in addressing and averting and minimizing the, you know, those unavoidable impacts from climate change. So all the opposite of no pressure, all pressures and all eyes are on COP26. Um, I'm however humble and excited to work together with so many great people and coalitions that are coming to Glasgow and to see like so many ways that people are leading change everywhere. So thank you. Thank you so much, Asatis. What a great panel. I'm so, we're so honored and humbled to have had such great speakers to get us fired up and also just bring some really important um, perspectives about what this COP is about and what it means, um, not just for the full planet, but also for some um, specifically for communities around um, the world that are being um, impacted right now. And um, this is a life or death um, uh, time for them. Uh, 
I, I would love to hear from all of you all now um, as far as what you would like our delegates and others to bring. What messages do you want folks to be bringing to the COP? Um, this is called Slido. If you are able to go either on your cell phone or on your computer and type in slido.com, you'll be prompted um, to put in a code. Um, if this is not uh, something you're comfortable with, you also can write in the chat the answer to this question, but I'm going to give you just a few moments to um, consider this question. What message, what's important? What, what, what do you want them to carry in their hearts or carry with their voices um, to the 195, 196 nations of the world um, and the negotiators that are at the COP? Some great, see the word urgent as a theme here. Building relationships, love it. No new fossil fuel infrastructure. Recognizing tribal, tribal sovereignty. All hands on deck, Alexander's written. Um, feel free to keep adding those will keep populating even when I move it forward to the next slide I want to give time for questions if there are any. Uh, a few before we move on to questions just a few opportunities um, we will be sharing in the chat the links to these things. Um, there is an educator toolkit available. Oh. Nice job. Thank you, Lauren um, for uh, educators to incorporate the cop. Uh, there is, there will be another virtual panel happening through the Humphrey Institute at the University of Minnesota featuring actually um, Julieta and Betsy as well, as well as um, some other uh, delegates from the University of Minnesota. Uh, please sign up to receive the window into COP Daily Digest. We'll be um, sharing the stories of our delegates as well as I'm sure featuring some of um, delegates that are here. Um, we are putting on a Teach Climate Network workshop, as well as communicating from COP. And um, many of the speakers that you saw here today will be featured um, at the US Climate Action Center, which is um, going, uh, part of the America is All In Coalition. Um, the presentation schedule is up and they will be live streaming those events um, from the uh, actual the center. So no matter where you are, you'll be able to, to see them. Um, and at this point, uh, if you want to follow our delegation, you can subscribe, like I said, we'll be also using social media, um, as well as the US ACE Coalition, which all of these folks that spoke today um, have are, are representing their own delegations as well as the US ACE. Um, we um, just got our own Twitter account. So follow us so we get more followers and um, you'll be able to follow us that way as well. Um, and at this point, I just love to open it up for questions. Feel free if you'd like to ask anyone um, in particular, uh, you can uh, just ask them or um, type it in the chat or just unmute yourself to ask a question. Hi, this is Leslie Webb. Can you hear me? 
Yeah. Hi, Lucy. Hi. Thank you so much for this. I'm so inspired. Um, I'm new to Climate Generation, but I can't wait to share the recording with the young people that I know in our uh, city who are working on climate, as well as teachers that we have worked with. So um, thank you so much for the work you're doing. My question is, if there is one event at COP that I can say to, to teachers, um, you know, be sure to share this with your students, um, what would that be? I, I feel like for people that aren't already connected, all the options that you gave us might be overwhelming. Yeah. Well, if they're teachers specifically, um, the November 4th panel is a specific webinar, and I'll throw it back in the chat here, that we're hosting from COP for student, for like classrooms and teachers, and it's featuring teachers. Um, Betsy and Julieta may be on that. Uh, the um, uh, Someone running uh, climate change education at Hamlin University will be on that one. I'll be there. So that one is specifically being tailored for teachers and students. Um, and uh, we're asking them to pre-submit questions and so they can register for that there. Um, as far as the other part, it's very difficult. I don't know if anyone else has ideas. Like the America is all in presentations. A lot of those, there's a youth panel um, that will be interesting to watch and hear from um, youth. But yeah, those those are my thoughts. Anyone else who spoke have ideas about it, like for our teachers and students? Those are my two big ideas. That's okay. That's great. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Yeah, well, may maybe I could jump in here because mine's all about teachers and the students and kids and so forth. So uh, uh, let's uh, see what happens. Uh, there's a book that's going to come out next year for families called the Green Actioneers Family Action Guide. Uh, it's a coloring book for the little kids. It's word games. Uh, it's in English. It's in Spanish. Uh, and uh, I'm thinking of going on my own to COP and going to the green zone. I know I can only spend three days in the green zone, according to the rules. Uh, but I wonder if that sounds like it would be uh, a good way to get uh, an important book into the hands and minds of the attendees and, uh, and the hangers on. <laughs> uh, because I really would like to see this book in many languages, not just English and Spanish. Uh, it's, it's designed to be distributed like scholastic books by holding big events at school in the evening and then bringing the families in, or like Tupperware for homeschool kids where you have a Green Actioneers house party and get the book into the hands of all the families. Uh, and the idea is it's like drawdown for families. Uh, you go step by step through the book, doing all the things that are in the book and then you're green. Uh, and it moves people toward green and I think We've got a lot of work happening at the top that we hope will trickle down. We have to work at the bottom and have it bubble up. And that's what this is all about. So any thoughts, any ideas about uh, if I do go, which days should I go? Uh, and is there anything besides the green zone uh, for me? Um, is it okay just to talk? Um, I'm just going to jump in. I think we're next. Um, this is Dr. Julie Davis. I think we were after Mr. Finnegan. That's okay. Greetings, everyone. This is Dr. Daniel Joy Davis. We're from St. Louis University, and we're actually a whole class here. The qualitative quantitative research class in School of Education. And within my list, we have, you cannot see them, but we have 10 teacher researchers here, emerging teacher researchers. And my question is, are there any teachers in the space who have used research within their classrooms related to this subject? Because if so, I would love to connect with them. Because one thing that we're learning in this class is 
various ways to do research within the classroom, but as the topic of this discussion notes, also being people-centered and action-centered. So I wanted to find out if there are any teacher researchers in the space who that we can possibly learn from in the future or collaborate with in the future. Thank you. Did Rachel, I'm sorry, I popped out. I had, I'll, I have to share with you. There's one of the things you have to do to get a cop is have your identity verified. And I've been trying to figure it out and they literally just called me and I, so that's what, <laughs> so I've been verified. <laughs> when the UN calls you, uh, you pause what you're doing. <laughs> Rachel, were you called up on though yet? I don't know if I was called up on. No, no your sorry. hand is up. So yeah, was, okay, here I go. Um, I just wanted to mention um, it's our future it, and uh, One Earth Film Festival are hosting together a live stream that will be 4 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Glasgow Time. We're uh, gathering in the lobby of the Marriott Hotel and um, first our U.S. Uh, stateside youth are going to um, have videos of, of their classmates in uh, about what do you know? So kind of getting, what do you know about climate change already? Then the Glasgow youth will be uh, sharing some of highlights of their week through video. We're hoping also to have a, a student from another country for them to interview. And if anybody has leads on a student who's going to be there, I would love that resource. Um, but if you follow us at IOF Youth, uh, we can, uh, send you the invite to this live stream. I, um, I think it's going to be excellent. Uh, yeah, I think those are the components. Awesome. Thanks, Rachel, for sharing. Is there any other questions that folks have? Um, yes, Kristen, can you hear me? This is Dr. Joy Davis. Can you hear oh, me? Oh, hey. Yeah, yeah I sure I, can. I posed my question and maybe you didn't hear it. But basically, the question was, right now, we have 10 teacher researchers in our space now. And we're learning about how to include the community within teacher research within the classroom. And my question was, if you knew of any practicing teacher researchers who incorporate research related to this topic into their classrooms that we can possibly connect with and learn from in the future. Because one thing that we're learning about in this research class is how teachers can apply research in the classroom and promote positive change within students' lives, whether it's K through 12 or higher ed, and positive change in families and communities. So my question was if you knew of any teachers, practicing teachers who are doing this type of research work in their classroom, because we would love to connect with them in the future possibly. Frank, did you have an, I was just wondering if Deb Morrison, were you gonna, yep. Okay, go ahead, Frank. Yep. yep. So uh, I'm glad I'm glad you re-asked the question. Um, so uh, there, there are two great communities that I think you could connect with. One is out of Washington state, there was a funded group called Climb Time. I'll put the link in, in the chat in just a second. Um, and they're doing a lot of deep, rich uh, research-based climate professional development uh, in Washington state. That's one. Um, also, um, there is the Climate Change Education Collective, which I really should be the Climate Change Education Research Collective, um, which is a different group than a lot of other ones. And you might find other researchers like Casey, Casey Bush out of North Carolina, who are working with teachers and um, researchers so, I mean, there's, there's lots of different communities doing this work. The one other group that you might want to look at is the NAAEE Research um, Symposium before the, had a ton of work in this area. So um, the EE360 uh, group might be a way, they have a whole focus on, on climate change. Um, and so it might be a way to plug into uh, this work. There's lots of literature being generated right now and lots of research to build gen, uh, literature uh, across the United States. Um, just finding you know, the thread that gets you into the beginning of it, I've given you a couple of those entry points.
but my highest one would be climb time out of Washington State, the easiest one to jump into. Excellent. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thanks, Frank. Is there any other questions that people have of the panelists or about COP or no question is a dumb question? No. Um. Kristen Frank Hornstein here. I, I put in the chat, but maybe there's others oh, have ideas or, or you have. Um, you know, we have so much talent, especially the youth on this call. And I think the stories would be so compelling to the media uh, and just getting the word out in local communities. So is there a plan or do you have any suggestions or advice about contacts with the media? I think, for example, in Minnesota, our whole delegation, particularly the youth, you know, should be in you know the, the the press should be engaged with them before during and after so is there kind of a plan around that lauren i don't know if you have some things to share about that um from our perspective and if anyone else from a more of a national perspective as well great question representative hornstein yeah thanks for that question um as far as climate generations uh outreach to media we've been pursuing connecting um our own delegates and then hopefully just the larger Minnesota uh, delegation to a new NPR show that's happening at noon um, on NPR. We're not 100% sure on the details, but I'm hoping that we can get several voices and representation on that if it works out. Um, so more to come um, as far as that. And uh, Climate Generation is also excited to partner with Yale Climate Connections, which is a national um, outlet or platform to share stories that come out of um, our delegation of youth. And I know that they also take op-eds and several submissions. Um, so I think that that would be a perfect opportunity to get you know, stories on, on a broader scale. Their whole kind of shtick is story, stories and climate. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, from climate generations perspective, that's, that's where we're at. But I also think there's so many more opportunities, especially from folks who have been to COP before and know kind of how press conferences work over there and, and other things. I have not experienced that before, but I'm, I'm hoping that there's a lot of opportunities while they're on the ground. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions before we bid adieu? Anne. Yeah, hi, I was intrigued by um, Isotis description or, or info about the People's Pavilion. Is that, uh, can you describe that a little bit? And um, is there a way for people to kind of zoom in uh, or, you know, just kind of hover around and see what's going on? Thanks. Absolutely, I'm super happy you asked that question. So um, the People's Pavilion, we've been working um, out of an initiative that's called Open Cop. So the idea is to have a space that bridges what's happening um, inside COP and outside. So it definitely is like the idea is that people can come and um, stream, you know, like see streams of what side events are happening inside of COP. But also if you have an event that's happening outside of COP and you want to um, be part of the pavilion, we can absolutely like receive it. And, you know, like we are, right now like working on the schedule between like the side events that we have with the US ACE coalition and other side events that are um, related to ACE and then other um, partners that have um, events outside. Um, but definitely we want people, um, everyone to come and join. So we're building the space um, as things go. Uh, so we're hoping to have registration link in the next few days. So please email me and I will also like send the link to um, Kristen so that she can socialize it with all of you. So anyone that is staying back and want to join in in the fun of COP26, uh, we would love to have you. It will have different instances. Like you can see the events and then in some events, depending on time, we will be able to bring questions inside of the, you know, the panels. Um, we will also be trying to connect communities to talk with their delegations at COP. And then mm -hmm. we will also list um, 
people from the USAID coalition and then um, our other partner organizations at Citizens Climate International, what streams of negotiation they're following. So you can say like, hey, what's happening in that, you know? Um, and then they can, you can leave them a message and then they can reply to you as, um, you know, as COP goes which is pretty hectic, but at least we want to create that channel so that that can be uh, a possibility. Thanks, Isatiz. Uh, and I'm gonna let us all go because it's 12.02. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. I'm hoping that you'll follow our amazing delegates or maybe we'll get to meet up with some of you that have been here today. Um, Thank you, especially to our panelists that came to us from all over the country today and in route to Glasgow. Uh, so um, thank you, thank you. Be in touch and have a lovely afternoon. Bye everyone. Bye, thank you.